Hello, and welcome to another draft video. Today, I'm going to be going through another traditional draft, and we'll see how we do. Doing all right to start off. Uh, yeah, Storming Entity is a pretty amazing card. Uh, you can get it out very early. Flying Prowess, Scry 2, these are all things that I love. Uh, definitely some kind of blue spells deck. Uh, if that wasn't in the pack, then I'd probably be taking a magma here just because I love the card so much. Or uh, a branch stomp because that's just super duper efficient. But I like me my sweet bird elemental. Surprisingly, not a bird elemental, just an elemental. It sucks. I, I want to use Animal Sanctuary to put a counter on it. So with Stormwing Entity, cards that go up in value are any kind of one mana uh, instant or sorcery. So we're looking at cards like Crash Through and uh, Defiant Strike, Cantrips, as well as Opt is the big one. Opt is like a must play in the deck if you can get any. Now let's take a look at this pack. So cards I'm immediately looking at are Bolthound, Beat of Resistance, Magmut, and Rousing Reed. Rousing Reed stays in my colors, allows me to get more flyers. Uh, Feet of Resistance is a great card for protection and growing your creatures. Magmut is a very solid two drop. And Bolthound is if I want to get real aggressive. This is this is pretty tough. I th I I'm most likely gonna be red red blue, and I like Magmut so much. Like I was thinking at first picking it last time, that I think I'm just gonna pick the Magmut. If I miss out on a Rousing Reed, oh well. Ooh, nice shock shock. It's already a card that I want. I want to start in all of my red decks, and it, its value just increases when you have a Stormling Entity. So I'm very glad to take that here, and there's three cards I'd be extremely happy on the wheel, so... Feeling pretty happy about that. Okay. So now we've got an extremely expensive flyer, which I'm not going to take. Uh, we got a 2-drop, a Frost Breath, Vidalian Arcanist and Read the Tides. Uh, Vidalian Arcanist is kind of taps for mana for Stormwing Entity. If you can cast you know, a two drop or more instant or sorcery, that makes this cheaper. This makes the initial instant or sorcery cheaper. That's decent. But it's not the most impactful card. Then again, the rest of the cards like. I'm pretty sure I can pick up a Read the Tides or a Frost Breath later, and missing out on an Igneous Cur is not that bad. Yeah, Arcanist it is, and ooh. Uh, being punished in a few different ways here, I suppose, in that this is a late Query and Dryad. Query and Dryad is an incredible card. It's played on turn two, and it just grows and grows and grows, especially in a blue deck. You're casting multiple tricky spells. Uh, we're also slightly punished for not taking the Rousing Reed with the Library Larcenist here. Rousing Reed is the best way to make this into a must-kill threat. But regardless, even if we missed out on a couple of those things, that's not that bad. Uh, there's a Goblin Wizardry here, and considering we have a Stormwing Entity, I haven't... I've played many red, uh, blue, like, Tampoo decks, but I've never gone full in for spells. So let's try that today. Taking this Goblin Wizardry and looking to pick up cards like Opt and uh, Crash Through, as well as Burn Brights, for instance. To because Burn Brights after a Goblin Wizardry basically give each of them plus three plus one. It's completely insane. So here there's a Battle Rattle Shaman. I love that, and I love the Battle Rattle, but. And you know, three blue cards that we'd love to have in our deck. So 
it seems like we're very much in the right colors here. It's either that or these are very, very strong packs. Because there's also a late fetid imp as well. Uh, I'm taking the magma. I can't stop taking magmas um, because they're they're just that good. Trust me on this. Next, destructive tampering and tome anima. These are both very medium cards. I'm not too interested in either of them. Uh, though Destructive Tampering does get a bit better in this type of deck. Cast Goblin Wizardry, untap, Destructive Tampering, some other spell, Swing for 6, unblockable, plus more if you have other creatures. That's decent enough. That'll take this and maybe, maybe play it, maybe not. I'm not sure. Ooh, that's a late Silver Smoke ghoul, ghoul. I really want to play with a dedicated uh, limited deck for this because this card is, seems uh, like a very strong build around. Being able to sacrifice draw cards, bring it back with for vitalizes and card tavern swindlers, cards of that ilk. Very powerful. So we've got an opt here and a goblin wizardry. And I'm going to be taking the goblin wizardry here. The cheap spells I think are a bit easier to come by rather than the payoffs in the form of cards like Goblin Wizardry. So happy about that. Ooh, the Magmut Wield. So my choice is either between the third Magmut or the Turn to Slag. And if you if you thought I was taking anything other than the Magmut here, I don't know what to say. The more the merrier. Uh a bunch of black cards, though only one of them is like super playable. Skeleton Notch is alright, but Archmage Vessel just does not have the support. And if, if you're reanimating stuff in this set, you need to be reanimating more than just a 5-5 flyer. So much better things. So I'm taking the Short Sword. It's a cheap spell for prowess, and it makes some of my other stuff bigger. Okay, so there's another Goblin Wizardry and a Frost Breath here. I'm going to be taking the third Goblin Wizardry, despite how much I love Frost Breath, because there's another one coming around that I suspect that I'll get. And I want, like I said, I want to see Goblin Wizardry every game in this deck, I believe. Late Larcenist, a nice rookie mistake, and a Walking Corpse. So, a lot of late cards came around for us, which is very exciting. However, this pack is less Good. There's very good cards in this pack. Season Hollow Blade, Alpine Hunt Master, Gale Swooper, but they're just not in our colors. So, of cards in this deck that we would play, it's Capture Sphere, Igneous Curve, Fur of the Bitten, and Swiftwater Cliffs. I'm not in for taking a tap land this early. Uh, especially when I only have one double color spell and it's five mana, like. In this deck, I'm hoping to get away with not having to play any of these if I can manage it. Uh, we've got four two-drop creatures already, so I'm not too in for Igneous Cur. Uh, Capture Sphere does trigger prowess and locks down a creature, though, so I think that's what we're going to pick. Uh, we could also go Fear of the Bitten and just try and get steal some cheeky wins, but uh, Capture Sphere is just more, uh, more of a solid spell. Okay, now here is a tricky one, because we've got Spellgorger Weird, Shock, and Chandra's Pyroling. With three Magmots, we can turn Chandra's Pyroling into a 2-3 Double Striker fairly easily. And if we have multiple Magmots out, we can pump its power even more, or we can throw down Shocks. Uh, Spellgorger Weird is uh, a 3-drop that we'd really love to have, uh, but I'm uh, I really wish I could take both of these cards, but I think the pick here just has to be Shock. Just It goes with everything that we're doing so well between the Stormwing Entity and the m three Goblin Wizardries. Okay, so here we get to pick up the Spell Gorge are weird, though I am a bit sad about passing a Frantic Inventory. I would love to get like three plus of those in this deck. Uh, it's possible that it might wheel. There's one, two... Three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, it might not wheel, but I hope that does. Oh wow, this is this is so many cards. 
for us. Uh, oh boy. Uh, as much as I want the fourth magma, it'll probably wheel. Uh, maybe, hopefully one of these two will wheel because I'm taking either the unsubstantiate or the roaming ghost light. Now we are more of a spells deck, so that's pushing me towards the unsubstantiate, but Roman Ghost Light is, it's just such the, it's the easiest two for one. I think I just have to take it. Okay, okay, we found our first frantic inventory, so hopefully we can cut the rest of those from everybody. There's also a Goblin Replicator, Goblin Replicator, Chrome Replicator here, which we do have three Magmuts, so that is an exciting way of putting so much power on the board at the at once, but no, Frantic Inventory is too too good of what we want to be doing to not take. All right, so here, wow, we've got two very powerful, very expensive blue cards here. I'm taking one of them, I'm taking the Waker of Waves because it does have the alternate uh, mode of sleight of hand to help smooth out my draws, but there is also a Burn Bright. Every piece of like, every piece of me, yeah, you know, we're, we're just taking the Waker of Waves. Yes, I know I'm passing up on a Burn Bright, and Burn Bright is extremely powerful with the Triple Goblin Wizardry, but I can't just pass up a Waker of Waves. It's, the versatility on this card is too strong. Now here we've got a Shipwreck Dowser and another Spell Gorge of Weird. My expensive slots are becoming quite filled. But again, Shipwreck Dowser is just powerful enough that I'd rather have that to rebuy Shocks or fr my Frost Breath to really get in there. Here, there's another Tome Anima and a Sanctum of Shattered Heights. I might as well just pick the pick the red Sanctum, and if I find the blue one, then play both of them and be very happy. We'll see though. Uh, here, yeah, I can take the Fear. Fur of the Bitten. Uh, pyroling or Turn to Slag? I think I'm in for a Pyroling at this point. I'm glad that wheeled. The Frantic Inventory wheeled. That's perfect. And Unsubstantiate and Opt wheeled. Okay, we're 100% in the right, the right lane here. And the, the Burn Bright wheeled with the one card left in the back. You know what they say, draft well, get rewarded. So, deck's coming together quite well, though we are pulled in a couple different directions here. I'm probably going to have to shave some things just to be, just to really focus in on what we got. And what we got is a Chandra. Whew. Lucky us. So, <laughs> I mean, obviously we're taking it. Uh, Multiple shocks to getting to shock something every turn is so in, insanely powerful. And if push really comes to shove, I can uh, toss my hopefully empty hand for three cards off the top to be able to play that turn. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty ecstatic about uh, getting that. Now we we're def we definitely have a lot of very expensive stuff here. Okay, uh, there's another Frost Breath, and, but, and a Tide Skimmer, though we don't have very many flying creatures, and I don't like Tide Skimmer that much in the first place. But yeah, Crash Through is pretty much exactly what we want to be doing there. Okay, yeah, fourth Magma, I'll take that over a lofty denial, which I again I don't have very many flyers, so toss that and be very happy, fairly okay with that. Uh, we could pick up a fourth goblin wizardry here if we wanted to. There's also an unleash fury for a lot of burst damage if possible, and another crash through. I think I've got enough goblin wizardries that I'd rather have more of these cheap spells to turn on. Uh, 
Gum Wizardry after I cast it, and make Stormwing Entity like a 3-drop. And what do we have here? Glide Master, more Crash Throughs, more Goblin Wizardries. Whew, we got so many multiples here. Uh, this... <laughs> At this point I could take the Chrome Replicator now that I've got four Magmuts. But uh, that's not happening. Um, I think I'm in for just another crash through and just play so many of these cheap spells. Uh, okay, that's a late Palladium Mirror. Uh, take a cancel for the side. Uh, a Glide Master, though probably not playing that. <laughs> Fifth Magma, anybody? Uh, we're a bit light on removal, for, especially for big creatures, so I could just take this turn to slag, but it's also a Reign of Revelation. I love that card. That, another Rookie Mistake, another Frost Breath, another Fur of the Bitten. We're getting close to having just 40 cards, no lands. This is gonna be a tough build. We've got so much, so much good stuff. Well, cut a couple of things somewhat easily. Only Shuri as well. The f fourth Goblin Wizardry. All right. It's, it's possible that I should have just taken the uh, Wall of Runes there to side in against some, any kind of like extremely aggressive decks, but eh. If you have if you have the chance to play a constructed decks worth of car the same card in a limited deck, like you take that. Let's start shaving spells. Yeah, at this point, I don't think I'm playing the Waker. I think we're beyond that. Fury can go. Same with the Larcenist. Uh, feel okay shaving a land here. Ooh, this is a bunch of stuff. Uh, I I'd like to keep in one Arcanist just so that I can turn on a turn three Reign of Revelation or Goblin Wizardry very easily. Uh, hmm. The rookie mistake. I could cut both frantic inventories if I just don't think that's what we're going to be doing. One of the frost breaths, so that pains me. And it it really feels like my five drops are just not really doing me any favors here, apart from, well, let's make Stormwing Edge entity a 3 drop like it's probably hopefully gonna be. So Chandra's too powerful not to play. I really want to play all of these so I could just cut a Goblin Wizardry. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do that though that makes me sad. But yeah I think this this is a pretty Pretty focused deck. That's got a couple cheap removal spells, an expensive, a single expensive one, but it's got frost breath to and unsubstantiate to kind of work my way through multiple goblin wizardries. I, I'm hopeful. I'm very hopeful. And. I should mention that, like, we've also got a fair amount of uh, cyborg material here between uh, cancel if uh, it has bombs. If we need to slow things down a little bit, I've got a second Arcanist that I can throw in here. Uh, if we find ourselves getting really 
stonewalled by a lot of ground creatures, we can bring in the destructive tampering as well. And if we suspect that our opponent doesn't have very much removal, we can even throw in uh, some chomp chomp auras and get in there. Let's let's get started and see how we do. Obviously playing first here, and okay, this is a bit awkward that we've got three four drops in our hand, but I'm confident in the amount of early drops that we have, famous last words, that we're going to be able to see some, and this shock makes sure that our opponent trying to really, uh, really aggro us out will be unlikely. Like if they play like one drop into Alpine Houndmaster, I can shock it and be okay. I'm playing the island here. Uh, I I like to not show my opponents uh, cards like shock early if I don't have to, because now it's like very conceivable that I have frantic inventory. My opponent doesn't have a second land. That's incredible for me. And we drew a Magmut, so I think we're... We just gotta draw like... If we draw one more land, then we're swimming in it, we can just snap off, yeah. We can snap off Goblin Wizardries at this point, and my opponent isn't doing anything about that. So the red-white, uh, with an expensive spell, and yeah, they, they've seen enough. They don't want to show me any more cards that they have to discard. <laughs> so, the red-white, I didn't see any extremely aggressive cards there. Really didn't see much of any. Though, that being said, I, oops, I don't want the cancel as well. Just, just going to bring in the Arcanist for a little bit of early defense. And we'll shave a crash through. I feel like I have enough stuff to trigger the Goblin Wizardry and the Stormwing Entity that I'm not... Don't let me go first, okay. Strange days here. I'm not going to cast this crash through at the moment because I do have a spell gorge over here to take advantage of it. Uh, if I didn't have the spell gorge or weird, like an immediate thing to take advantage of it, I would cycle it there. I feel like I had a train of thought and then it just derailed. Nice. Always lucky. So now we've got our spell gorge or weird. Next turn we can cra like crash through, shock their blocker, and really go ham. Hopefully they just play like an Anake Ogre here. And not a removal spell. Ah, uh, Bolt Hound. Are they getting in? Or do they want to block? They're getting in, alright. Very happy about that. So let's start off with the crash through. And... We'll play an, Ar an Arcanist here, uh, so that even if we don't draw a land, we have the mana to uh, end of their turn Goblin Wizardry. Why lies in our Radiant Fountain? They're gaining life. That's that's annoying. They shouldn't be doing that. I'm trying to make that go to zero. Oh, and they have a Heartfire Emulator. That's going to be a bit annoying. And a Prismite, that's fine. So, okay, uh, we'll just pass here and make like, oh, we're stuck, I'm stuck on mana now. Hopefully they try chucking their Heartfire Emulator at my Spell Gorge or Weird, uh, like now. 
and then I can wizardry and make it big. Okay, so let's let's block like that. That will And let's block the Prismite, just in case they have Bastry's Acolyte or some other kind of double, double white spells. So they basically th threw away their Bolt Hound here for some... Okay, now they're throwing away their Heartfire Emulator. I can't do anything about that. Now that it is 4 power from the Bolt Hound attack. So I'm just going to have to deal with that. But let's throw down some wizards. And make sure we don't have to deal with Bolt Hound ever again. And swing back for five. So now I've got three amazing five drops if I draw lands. And if I don't draw lands, <laughs> figures I drew the last five drop. Uh, so now I'm at the point where I'm either drawing lands for these amazing spells, or I'm drawing spells like this one. Alright, let's fire in for some extra stuff here. Really go ham. I'm very blessed that there are no board wipes in this set outside of uh, Pestilent Haze, which my opponent can almost cast here. Alright, let's crash through. <laughs> Get real big. Oh my god. Let's unsubstantiate their Prismite. Get extremely big. Slam in for exact season, unless I have something. All right, that was a fairly simple round one. Uh, let's see if this deck can hold up in games that are a bit more eventful. But outside of, you know, having all of my five drops in hand with only four lands in play, uh, deck is working just as expected. Alright, I will definitely keep this. Being able to go turn 2 Arcanist into turn 3 Reign of Revelation to completely set up whatever I want to do is very powerful. And if I draw a Shock or an Opt... Wait, do I even have any Opts? I don't. I, I just have Shocks and uh, Crash Throughs. That's a bit annoying. Uh, but if I draw any of the uh, one mass spells, I can also... There's a Shock. Just throw down a turn three Stormwing Entity, and, which is likely going to be the plan instead of Reign of Revelationing. You have the chance to put something huge on the board, you do it. Let's get this guy out of here. Play a 3-3 three, three Flying Prowse Scry 2. Goblin Wizardry. And a land. I like both of those. Ah, oh, nice. Opponent has a Solemn Simulacrum. Love this card. ETB grab a land. Dies draw a card. What's not to love? I'm not going to try and get tricky here with this uh, Goblin Wizardry. My opponent can't attack through this Arcanist anyways, so I'm not really gaining too much by holding it, whereas by playing it, I get another point of damage, unless my opponent has Roman Ghostlight, in which case they bounce my thing, and I'm very sad. <laughs> Alright, so let's... 
rain here. Oh, shipwreck Dowser is going to be very, very useful here. Throw down a Goblin Wizardry, because why not? Magmut, and let's swing with both. I'm giving away uh, half a Goblin Wizardry to my opponent's drawing a card, but having that Solemn no longer on the battlefield means that I can attack with my Magmut for two instead of just tapping it for one. Okay. play a land here uh, so as to not get ah well I'm gonna get lofty dialed anyways if that's gonna be a thing that happens grab us a shock that go away very glad that my opponent didn't have a sublime epiphany there it felt like that's what they might have uh, instead they don't have anything which is quite strong quite strong uh so, like, the only cr thing that my opponent could play here is, like, a Truffle Snout, <laughs> and even then I've got two ways of locking that down. Yeah, my opponent's green-blue. Some flying stuff, but kind of a whole lot of nothing. Uh, in that case, I'm just gonna... Not gonna do anything. I didn't see anything there that I think necessitated swapping anything out. One thing I will have to uh, remember though is I was actually thinking about this last game, but decided not to because I didn't need to. But a uh, bit awkward, but I think I'll keep it. Is that uh, Roman Ghostlight bounces uh, non spirits, so it can't bounce itself. Okay, uh, I don't have a two drop here, which is annoying, but I'll still be able to do the wombo combo. Of... Ooh. Uh, I'm gonna untap shock, storming entity, and fix my draws. Something to say about consistency. Uh, crash through and an island. Okay, I like drawing a crash through with this Goblin Wizardry in hand. So that way I can Goblin Wizardry untap, crash through, Reign of Revelation, get completely in there. Not going to play into a uh, Roman Ghost Light this time with my uh, Goblin Wizardry. And I've got this capture sphere just in case they throw down some horrible aura, which I don't even think really exists. Like, that doesn't count. No lofty denial? One time? Okay, we're. A we're swimming in it now. Let's crash through, because the card I draw might be, you know, more than one mana. I might want to play it. It's not. But let's also get rain. Ah, frost breath. That's annoying. But we get to discard <laughs> one of the three lands that we drew there. Attack for three. Yeah, there's there's the argument to be made that I should just hold back the uh, Goblin Wizard to block the Pride Malkin. Uh, but I don't think that's necessary. I'd rather get in. Gnarly Sage, okay. That's quite annoying. But we have ways of dealing with that. Make it go away for a turn. And pass. Now I'm getting to low enough life that I will block the Pride Malkin. Works for me. Play the Gnarled Sage, and now we've got things. Again, let's cast the Crash Through just in case we find something 
super special that we want. Uh, not really. Let's lock down this sage. Play a land and swing with these for eight. Magma and pass. So we've got a roaming ghost light to make sure we don't die to some kind of titanic growth shenanigans. And my opponent has shown that they are hellbent. That's excellent for me. Uh, yep, yeah, okay. We, we win. Uh, we can shipwreck Dowser here for a shock. Swing with both our flyers. Blocks. Magma them. We shock them. Excellent. That was game two as well. <laughs> All right, so we're to 2040, going into the last round and Feeling very happy. I swear I don't, uh. I swear I only record haphazardly. I don't just record. I don't record everything and just throw up the ones where I'm winning. <laughs> I swear. But you'll have to believe me. So, what am I least hoping to face here? Probably a really aggressive like Boros deck. Uh, white red. That would be really unfortunate. Uh, as well, like a blue black reanimator deck that can throw down an early waker of waves would also be extremely sad. Uh, as well. <laughs> Caravic the Spiteful completely hoses my deck. Just turns my Goblin Wizardries into 4 mana 2 nothings. Alright, so opponent ha is on a black deck here. Not showing me any else. Okay. Throw down Magmut. Next turn, Pyroling. Turn after that, Goblin Wizardry. The curve is strong. The curve is powerful. One's playing a Sky Scanner. But I'm not playing as Nick. It's a reference to my a couple of my draft analysis videos that I've posted where I ridicule a friend of mine for continuously picking Sky Scanner extremely early. I can notice they're playing a Skeleton Archer now and not later. Attack him with the Sky Scanner, yes. Makes sense. Double crash through Unsubstantiate. That's going to be a big ums. Uh, let's shoot them and offer up this Pyroling for trade. possible that they will not want to block as I'm showing potential tricks here, in which case I get in for 4 damage, which I'm extremely happy about. Let's pass and unless they play uh, an island to lofty denial this goblin wizardry, I'm pretty sure, or a Karavik the Spiteful, which they're not playing Karavik the Spiteful with their double sky scanner deck, that'd just be a bit much. I think we're doing it. I think we are 100% doing it here. It is possible. There are, uh, they could be holding up Grasp of Darkness or uh, Eliminate here, which would be 
annoying. Alternatively, they could just be holding up uh, Witch's Cauldron activation. Thinking about things while I'm tapped out. Oh, no? Okay. Let's crash through here. And now that I've untapped, I have this unsubstantiate up for a removal spell if they choose to play that. Oh my god. <laughs> Let's go back, Jack, and do it again. Shoot them with Magmut. And because my creatures have trampled, this is going to be a, a very big swing. Like right now, this is 10. And it's going to be even more. Let's shock their face. So, so far that's lethal. For just what's on board right this moment. Okay, that's not quite what you need to be doing. Yeah. Up. Sweet. Didn't have even have to show them the unsubstantiate. Okay, so my opponents on sky scanners and skeleton arts. And, yeah, they're on maybe mono black or maybe just missing their second color. I'm not sure. Regardless, I don't think that that changes anything about my deck at the moment. It will be annoying though that I am playing against a black deck because they do have Pestilent Haze. Uh, so luckily it's just a sorcery though, so I am I just need to be careful with my Goblin Wizardries that I'm casting them and then doing something with them. Instead of just throwing them out there and not doing anything with them, waiting around and then just getting blown out. Luckily, v Vidalian Arcanist, Chandra's Pyreling, all my five drop, well, not all my five drops, the Stormwing Entity and the Shipwreck Dowser all survived that, as well as uh, Spellgorge or Weird after a single spell. Unfortunately, my four of Magmats and my three of Goblin Wizardries do not survive Pestilent Haze. Minus two, minus two to all creatures is enough to make my head spin. Are either taking their time sideboarding or my internet is messing up. I'm not sure which. Well, it doesn't look like my internet's messing up, so just waiting on them to take all the time in the world. Two minute mark, and they either are either AFK or they ran out of time. I'm still I still don't know what happens when you run out of time while sideboarding. If it just takes your main deck, or if it takes your deck as is, it probably doesn't take your deck as is. Oh, it could. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, it could. Uh, given the no, no, it can't because you have to have an equal amount. <laughs> 
Okay, so they threw down a Tormod's Crypt. That hoses my Shipwreck Dowser, I suppose, but that's all. Uh, here I am throwing down the land because if they do, if they have a fetid imp, I do want to shock that and keep my mana efficient. They do not. So we do not yet have lands to make our bigger stuff go, but. Go magma into magma into crash through to look for a land. It's certainly not the worst. Death bloom for the phallid. That's that's annoying because this guy's pretty just like I know that it's probably right for me to use my shock on it, but I don't want to. Instead, I'll just play another magma. And pass, shooting them on their turn. Now, if they attack, I'm not blocking because I'm fairly certain that I can gun them down before they can smack me with thalids or whatever else they might have, like sky scanners. That, I mean, it does speed up the clock, but only by one turn. Assuming. They get through with their phallid every turn and nothing else happens. Okay, so they, they are getting in, which I'm extremely happy about that. Because, believe it or not, I'm... I, my opponent is probably not winning this race here. Ah, nuts. Okay. So, at least here I can get... I'm technically getting a point of damage through with this crash through, if they do want to block, which they're not going to. Didn't find land, we found another magma though. Now this is getting a smidgen worrying. Because if I don't draw lands, then I'm gonna eventually have to block. Ah, there's a cage zombie. That's annoying. Okay, uh... Arcan Arcanist is not... is a decent draw here because now I can block the cage zombie with it all day long. Uh, and now I am going to trade off one of these magmas for a Death Bloom Thalid because downgrading it into a 1 1 means that I can take care of it with my board. Ooh, Skeleton Archer. Are they going to shoot my Arc Arcanist or are they going to shoot me? They're going to shoot me, so that's very useful. If I was my opponent, I w would have attacked in first. <laughs> As a matter of fact, now I can block the Thalid. And now I'm just gonna chump the zombie. I don't want to trade my magma for the zombie. I'd rather trade my magma for the archer. So let's shoot them twice. Okay, that's the third land. Unfortunately, it's an island, so we're not going to be able to double spell. Uh, but that is useful for being able to deploy goblin wizardries. So here we pass and see what's up. Best draw on my deck would 100% be a mountain. That way I could Goblin Wizardry plus Shock on their turn and really stop them from what they want to be doing. Okay, they're, again, playing a Skeleton Archer now instead of later. I'm very happy about that. Going to be shooting the Magma here. 
Oh, they're shooting me. Okay. Passing him. Let's see what they do. Okay, they're attacking with all of the things. So let's go to blocks. Let's chump block there. Fine with this. Let's become a wizard, Harry. I'm going down to six here. And my... Oh, can't forget to magma them. My point to 12. So... Nice. That's a... Wait, the high drop there. Uh, I suppose I just, I suppose in this case I must pass Goblin Wizardry. Alternatively, I could crash through looking for something, but I just don't think that's very useful right now. Let's let my opponent decide what to do. This Goblin Wizardry is going to make these into 2 twos, which means that I can block and k trade only one of them for a Skeleton Archer or the Cage Zombie. And I really want to get rid of uh, the Cage Zombies because they're going to start uh, shooting me down soon. My opponent thinking of... Yeah. My opponent with... If my opponent was thinking of using their Witch's Cauldron, then I would have some very strong words for them. Drop the Wizardry. And get to blocking. I think that's my best bet here, only taking one. I have to be on the defensive here, I think. I can't, I really don't think I can afford to let this through and go to two, ping them down to 11 and have this, uh, like one, two, three, goblin was this? No, I think I just have to play a bit defensively here and preserve my life total. I just don't have the red sources to be able to try anything funny right now. Get that beautiful one damage. So yeah, if I if I knew I had double red, then I at least start doing some math in my head about okay, if I let stuff through, how can I untap? How much damage do I have untapping and swinging with, you know, crash through shock face, uh, potentially being able to to really get him, but. I do just have to be careful here. Okay, that's another island. On the plus side, now I can block with this Arcanist and cast this Goblin Wizardry. Opponent not using their Witch's Cauldron, I assume, that they'd rather just have their board than an extra card in life. Now, a Thalid, okay. Now we're getting into the scary territory where they can hit me down to four with Skyscanner and just hold back. Or, well, they played the Death Bloom Thalid, so that's not entirely true. 
Okay, great. They're attacking with stuff. So this means I can get rid of this cage zombie and make sure that my life total isn't gonna, you know, bad stonks. Now this is interesting here because I could throw this Arcanist in front of this cage zombie, go down to one, then potentially untap and swing out if I had another red source with enough damage to kill my opponent, but I am not confident in that happening. So let's... So if I block like this, I'm left with these two probably. Alternatively, if I block these two here and these three there, I'm left with probably the same thing. Uh, okay. I'm perfectly fine with clearing my opponent's Part of my opponent's board out. They'll have a sky scanner and a death bloom thought. I will have a wizard and a goblin wizard and a merfolk wizard. And there, ah, oh, that feels good. So we got the second mountain. Now, what do we do? I could throw down Chandra, shock their like sky scanner, make sure that I'm not taking any more damage in the air. Alternatively, I can play Spellgorger Weird, plus leave up shock for sky scanner, block Deathbloom Thalid with token. I think I like that quite a bit better. I think my opponent really bungled this one up by continuously attacking with their cage zombies while I'm at such a low life total instead of just trying to burn me out regardless of the combat step. I'm I like I'm in red red blue. I outside of radiant fountain, I have no ways of gaining life. So I think that my opponent really didn't do their due diligence in this game attacking just like I wanted them to. Now they can, they can activate their Witch's Cauldron for value, unless they want to try and play something, which they don't. So Spellgorge Weird gets a counter, Goblin Wizard gets a prowess, Death Moon Thalid gets blocked. They're gonna use their Tormod's Crypt now, sure, okay. You exiled a bunch of spells, but not my shock. Alright, so another island which doesn't really do uh, much of anything. Uh, I think here the play is to play Chandra. <laughs> and snipe down their mirror and attack for four. Snipe down their mirror just in case they have a gourmand to uh, you know, deploy a very large flying attacker that I probably won't be able to deal with. Well, certainly can't deal with with my current hand. I would need to draw a bounce spell to deal with that. Oh, finishing below targets, Planeswalkers. Fair play to my opponent there. But let's get big. Put my opponent down to six. My two lands versus their four cards in hand. Three cards in hand. Rich Lurker. 
doing nothing. Okay, so my Spellgorger Word still can swing in. This Silent Dart hits creatures only. That's excellent for me. Uh, let's make it rain. Not tapping my Arcanist for this. Excellent. Uh, let's toss one of these. Throw down a Stormwing Entity. And yeah, let's take a crash through. Why not? And let's just swing for six. It's possible that they have an alchemist gift. Plus shenanigans, I don't know. Let's see if they do have an alchemist gift. Death Toucher or something. Oh, a Gloom Sower. That's a very large creature. And yeah, let's just maximum bad matters here. Nope. Gloom Sower, not a, not a spirit. It's by looks. It is a horror. With that, we officially go 3060 with a fantastic blue, blue red spells deck. Uh, don't forget to add to decks here. Yeah, uh, I was had some pretty. Uh, I'll admit I did get lucky this draft. My first round opponent didn't do much of anything. My third round opponent would have won that uh, second game had they played their. Uh, Whatever that card is that uh, whenever pings opponents for two, if as long as the creatures died, uh, crypt zombie or whatever, uh, if they had used that smarter, then I would have lost that that game. Maybe not that match, but we would have had to see. So yeah, uh, got the big prize and with the big deck, the big deck energy. All right, well, that's it for this video. Stay tuned for more in the foreseeable future, I, I suppose. I just spend a bunch of money on uh, new mics so you won't hear me smacking all the time. So yeah, look forward to a more professional setup in, I don't know, one to six weeks or however long it takes for this stuff to ship to me. All right, peace.